Good morning, guys. This is a little add-on that I'm throwing at the beginning of this video just because I found it interesting. Um, I shot the rest of this video yesterday. This morning I was getting ready to edit, edit and was going through my normal little list of things on the computer. And uh, when I got to Atlas Lay stuff, I found two listings from the, the same seller that were listed together. They basically go together um, that I wanted to cover because I thought they were kind of interesting. They're parts that you don't see very often. So I thought it was interesting here. I thought you might be, you might like to see them. Um, so let me find them here very quickly and see, oh, there's a few new listings here since I was here this morning, but we're just going to skip by. This is, this is just going to be a quick one. So you can look at these if you want. Like I say, you don't see these very often. Um, and what they are is they're a set of guards for a 10 inch and it's somebody parting out a machine, you know, should be slapped for that, but nonetheless. Atlas Craftsman Lathe, 10F guard cover pin, 10F723, 10F724 with bracket aluminum. These are a set of guards and they're being sold individually. And um, I didn't look at them real close other than to recognize what they are. Now, both of these are on Buy It Now's for $150 each. They're, they're a set of guards for the Atlas 10F, and Atlas sold these, I believe they were originally marketed as a safety guard, is what they called them. They made two different, two different mountings for these, or two different side uh, guards for them. One was for the horizontal counter shaft, and one was for the vertical counter shaft. Uh, when I look at this first one, and I'm just going to go through the pictures, I, I don't, there's nothing, there's nothing really stellar about the listings or anything. It just lists what they are. This is for a seller that uh, I talk about later in the video that was parting out some machine stuff, and I think he was listing a lot of stuff as excellent. Um, this is, this is the top guard I'm looking at first, and it's a large guard. It basically covers all of the belts. On the on the top of your machine through the through the headstock from the headstock to the counter shaft and, the, and then the other one is the counter shaft down to the motor pulley. They're pretty big guards, and I actually have a set of these, and I don't remember if I've got for the horizontal or the vertical counter shaft, but there is a couple of things to note about them. Uh, this top cover looks to be in pretty good condition. Um, it's uh, it's got, um, it looks like all the mountings and everything. Now, I do see a little plate bolted to the front. Uh, yeah, there's a repair on the front of this um, down, below the, down below the label. Um, I personally don't think they're worth $150 in the condition they're in. Um, they're, a, they're a unique set of guards. You don't see a whole lot of them. Um, and like I say, I think they were marketed at the schools. You didn't want your, you didn't want your 12 year old sticking his hand into the belts. It made the shop teacher look bad. So, um, uh, they were primarily marketed there. The castings are very thin aluminum. And when I initially purchased my set several years ago, it was, this, it was with the idea that it was one more guard that I was going to cast. Um, I've not done so. And mine are pretty ragged. I'll drag them out at some point here in the future and we'll look at them a little bit closer and maybe get a better understanding of them if you don't actually see this listing. This one's been repainted, of course, and, and all of that. Like I say, there is a repair on the front. Um, where it broke because the aluminum castings are so thin and they're up they're a fairly substantial casting there there's a big area being covered um, so that's the that's the first one they're wanting 150 dollars buy it now and then 34 45 shipping um, and that's going to ship in a fairly big box you're not going to put that i don't believe in any kind of a flat rate box it's too big for any of that now that's the top cover um, and, and like I say, I'm not, I'm not really yay or nay, and I, I think like most of the things that I see here, I think they're too much money, but nonetheless. Now the second listing is Atlas Craftsman 10 12 inch belt guard, part number 10F-722 aluminum construction. These are original. They were originally cast in aluminum. It's what they, what they were. This is $150 or best offer and $20 shipping. Now I did notice when you look at this one, it's from the same seller, of course, he's selling the set of them. Um, and I haven't looked at the picture very closely on this one, although there was something that I did notice. Um, castings in 
okay for used beat, crap, beat to crap condition. Now I don't see any damage to the outer cover itself. The problem that I have with it, the problem that I have with it is it is a good outer cover and it doesn't say if this is for the horizontal or the vertical and, and I believe they did them both ways. Um, now the way to probably tell this is to go back through this seller's listings because he's parting out the machine. So if he's parting out this same green colored piece of crap that um, he's trying to make his fortune on why it's going to be listed there and I may go back off camera and try and figure out exactly what that is. But anyway, the problem with this is it's not complete. It shows the outer guard cover, it shows uh, the swing out hinges on the cover and, and the cover itself is in usable condition. But there's an inner cut or an inner portion to this cover and that's what mounts on to the, um, I believe the counter shaft assembly behind the behind the upper counter shaft pulley and without that this is pretty well useless you're going to have to really fabricate and as i recall as i recall the back cover it's a cast aluminum part too but it's very thin through 90 percent of it it covers the entire back of this guard but then there's a boss with a collar on it that actually clamps onto that counter shaft assembly as i believe where it where it mounts to so you're missing this you're missing that portion of the cover so if you don't have that the outer portion is virtually worthless you know you could foreseeably build you one but unless you know exactly what you're looking at or really you know pretty adept at fabricating this stuff while well, you're going to be in trouble so anyway i just found those very interesting um just because you don't see them very often so anyway i'm going to go on the rest of my little rant will start now and uh enjoy the day well good morning guys i thought i'd do a very quick little flea bay edition here just because i was sitting in front of the computer earlier this morning and uh going through stuff and i found a couple of things that i found kind of interesting i thought i might share um normal little rants um i will say since everybody normally puts it in their videos like this and everything i want you to know that i'm in no way sponsored by flea bay to trash on their sometimes unscrupulous sellers so anyway let's go through my normal little list of things gonna be fairly quick i'm not gonna do a whole lot here so let's just see what we've got and i've already looked at atlas mill stuff um nothing nothing new or shattering there that really makes you know is worth even talking about we've all been over it before when we look at shaper stuff a couple of things right off the bat um and i noticed this yesterday and i see it's been added to again today or maybe it was a day before anyway Atlas 7B Shaper aftermarket side plate, brand new, starting out at $35 free shipping. Now, I wanted to look here. I've seen these before. And, okay, Solo has been around for a little bit, not a whole long time. 100% feedback rating. Now, and just because I hadn't looked at that before, so I wanted to check. These are, and, and right below this, there is a shaper guard. And granted, these are in competition with me because I cast a shaper guard. I also cast the side cover for the shapers. I don't have any in stock right now. I haven't cast any for a little bit. I did pull the, my original back out again, and I'm going to go back to developing a pattern for a match plate. I've never gotten around to do that. The ones that I've cast previously, and I've cast, oh, three or four dozen of them over the years, why I've cast off of my original, and uh, they work fine. You know, they're cast in aluminum. The originals were cast iron. Now, what these are, both this this side cover and the shaper guard, appear to me to be Kydex, which is, if you're not familiar with it, it's a formable plastic. Where it's really become popular, kind of in my world, is the last few years, Kydex has become very popular for building holsters for pistols, primarily. And I've delved into building Kydex holsters. I've built quite a few over the years. I'm pretty well set up to do it. Now, what these appear to be to me are somebody's built a mold for both this side plate cover and, and the smaller shaper guard. And I have seen the larger shaper guards too with these. They, as I recall, and I haven't seen them for quite a while, but as I recall, they were in the hundred and some dollar range 
couple three hundred dollars for the set I don't remember exactly I felt like they were relatively expensive for what they were now I've not seen these listed for quite some time so I don't know exactly why um, I've got a little bit of speculation but I I'm not honestly sure you know and I don't know if there was a problem with production of them I don't know I, I honestly don't know Anyway, we know how I kind of feel, I stated before, how I feel about 3D printed stuff, and I basically feel the same way about plastics on our machine. Now there's several pictures here, about four pictures. The front looks fairly nice. There's no Atlas logo in it, of course. And um, when you look at the next picture, why it shows the back side. And what they've done is they formed the outer edge with Kydex, it appears. And then there is a inner layer, which may or may not be Kydex. It may be some sort of another plastic to go on. And then the little, little lip that uh, is normally cast in as part of the, the normal side cover. This has another piece of plastic adhered in there to hook inside to hold it. And then they've got a, um, a little bit of a mechanical twist latch, whereas the original latch that went in there was just a, a um, little metal spring that you pushed in and it held it in place like most of the other Atlas covers have been. So um, this is on a bid. It's at $30. You know, it will work. Uh, I won't, you know, I'm not going to say any more about it really than that. If that's what you feel you want, that's fine. You know. um, so that's that one. The shape regard and these are not said that they are it's not stated that these are plastic um but i'm i'm relatively sure that they are kydex from from looking at the outer texture on them and just looking at the way they are now when i look at the shaper guard it's the same way and i would speculate from looking at the pictures and all this is a speculation that there is there was not a pattern made for this it appears to me that this was probably draped over a original guard and it was formed that way uh there's been an insert put on the on the mounting uh where the mounting post would be cast in where there's a hole in the shaper to mount it on the post off of the oil tray and then the insides have just been, or the, the lightning cutouts or the air vents, whatever you want to call them, that are basically for visual appearance, they've just been cut out on the inside, it looks like. So um, nothing really to say there. Now, the issue that I have with this, and it says after Alice 7B, aftermarket belt guard, some storage scratches, you'll have to drill and tap or modify your liking to mount. I am not responsible for that. Um, the problem I have with that is if you've used plastics on there, and this is part of the reason I don't like plastics on our, on our Atlas machines, I do not think that that will hold up as well as it needs to over prolonged use. So the originals are, they're tapped quarter 20 and they're casting on aluminum casting for the side guard so there's potential that you could strip out your aluminum you know your threads than the aluminum too and have an issue but i think you're going to have much more problems with a with a um with plastic inserted and i can't tell you what kind of plastic it is they've taken another looks like a piece of round rod that's been drilled and they've uh adhered it some way with some sort of a glue or something to hold it together so that would be my primary concern there um so there you go if you got to have one there it is but i think there's better options myself uh don't see anything else really new and list new that we haven't talked about before on the on the shapers um and we always see lots of stuff when we look at the lathes here and let's see what we've got because I did notice there were several things and a couple that I actually really kind of liked or one that I actually liked um, 10 12 inch lantern tool post set no they're in excellent condition there we are with our excellent condition again um, 200 bucks you know for your 200 bucks year in this day and age you're better off to invest in a uh, quick change style tool post you know that's a lot of money individually they're probably worth that if you have to have them but um that is 
in essence obsolete tooling. Now I do like lantern style tool posts and I occasionally swap around to a lantern style tool post for a special use application that I haven't set up a set up a quick change for um, or something I don't want to take the time or dedicate another quick change tool post to. So I still do occasionally use lantern tool posts, but uh, is it my primary means of doing it? And am I going to go out and spend $200 on a set like that? Probably not. Uh, thread protectors, 12 bucks. Those are going to be 3D printed. I'm speculating. I'm not even going to look at that. We know how I feel about that. Transverse gear case. Now there's a couple here that really caught my eye. Let's see if this was one of them. I don't believe it was. Yeah, this is just another gear case, $130. I, I think that's too much money. You know, this one's obviously been cleaned up, but nonetheless, and who's the seller here? Yeah, this is a seller that's that started listing some stuff again. I hadn't seen any of his listings for a while, and I see them again now. Um, Atlas Craftsman, 10, 12 inch transverse gear case, complete steel gears, not Z Mac. Um, which is, I believe, the way these originally were. I believe the gears were steel gears. Compost tool, post slide screw. It's got the screw, the nut, but no handle on it. It's got the mounting boss, um, 50 bucks. Counter shaft pulleys, lantern tool posts. 150 bucks. I'm having to kind of look through here. There was a couple that really caught my attention um, that I wanted to go back and talk about. 12 inch lathe carriage apron 10F9A from model 101. $325. Now it's got the hand wheel on it. It's got the um, threading and crossfeed engagement it's got the power feed used in good working condition i don't believe i really looked at this one and it's used it's grungy inside um i won't spend much time here just because this one didn't really i hadn't looked at it before looks like the miter gears have some you know the one for the for the uh, bevel gear for the crossfeed looks a little bit trashed out. A lot of a lot of grease inside, which doesn't actually look like. You know there's grease there staining. Doesn't look tremendously bad as far as the crap built up in it from what you see on a lot of them. So let's move on. Nothing to see here. Three hundred twenty-five dollars is too much. Um, 12-inch commercial lathe compound rest guard, 4250. To me, that seems a little high. To me, that seems a lot high. Now, see, when we look at some of these others, and I haven't looked at this listing, 10-inch metal lathe counter shaft, rocker shaft, and a lever, 1076, 1077, and 1078. 2095 is starting bid, 3295 and 895 shipping. That is probably reasonable. You know, maybe who's who's listing this here? Um, I recognize the name, but nobody that really sticks out, but um, that looks like a, you know, reasonable cost for that item. So, um, yeah, nothing, nothing to, to see here. Um, okay, Atlas Craftsman 10, 12 inch lathe, hand wheel shaft and gear, 2250 and 375 shipping. Now this is from a seller that has been doing a fair amount of stuff. It's listed as used. And um, he's got several things listed here. And Alex Crossman 10, 12 inch lathe, hand wheel shaft and gear uh, in good condition. And I believe it is in good condition. The problem that I have with these is the same thing that I've complained about before. These have been bead blasted. And you know, when you are redoing something on a machine, you may very well want to be blasted off, sand blasted off. These are sand blasted, I think, probably rather than be blasted. It looks like it's a fine sand. Um, looks like it's a little coarser bead than you would get off of glass beading them. So I'm going to say that these were sand blasted with a fine sand or a well-worn sand in your sand blast cabinet. 
Um, and if you want to do that when you rebuild your machines, why that's a very good option. I think, you know, I use sandblasting a fair amount to clean up parts that I'm going to redo or remove paint, whatever the case may be. The problem I have with a lot of these that I see here is they are used to hide things, I guess is the best way of putting it, because they will hide things. Um, I, I can see some wear marks on the shafts on this, which there should be wear marks on this shaft. They've been in a machine for you know, 20, 30, 40 years. We've got, um, we've got some neighborhood dogs that have decided, their, their owners have decided to let them loose in the mornings and they like to go and um, utilize our yard to deposit things. So anyway, um, the problem is you cannot actually, a good portion of the time, see the condition of these parts that you're buying. Um, I can see some wear marks on this shaft and it probably doesn't, they would probably still be a good usable part. Um, there's going to be wear on that shaft and there's going to be wear on the apron that they came out of. So you just want to be aware of that when you're looking at some of these parts. And I've talked about this before. Um, right below there's a apron miter year, a 10F83 used good, it says in parentheses, um, in good condition. So when I was looking at these gears earlier, it is basically, and these are the steel gears, it is basically in good condition. There's some markings on it that um, part of them may very well be from manufacturing. You know, it's on the outer edge of this bevel gear. There's some, some markings there. Um, but it's still can be used. I believe this is the one I saw a little bit of markings on it. Oh, I know what it was on this. This has a bronze bushing on the inside. And if you look at the pictures, you can see where it's been sandblasted. Um, now, once you've sandblasted them with these bushings, and if you're rebuilding them, you're going to replace these bushings anyway. But nonetheless, these bushings have been completely ruined, even if they were in good condition by sandblasting them. You know, you've embedded sand in those in those bearings, in those oil light bearings or bushings, and um, it has it has trashed any usefulness that was there. Um, otherwise, this gear is not in bad condition, but. For 42 bucks, you're getting the gear, the stud, and the nut on the back. You're going to throw away the bushing um, and 475 shipping. Now, is that a good buy? I don't necessarily think it is. But um, 10, 12 inch lathe carriage crank handle, 6550, and right below it is a 10, 12 inch lathe hand wheel uh, for 38.50. These are from the same seller. I'm not sure exactly what makes the lathe carriage crank handle worth so much more than a, a standard hand wheel, which is the larger hand wheel and has more. Now, um, oh, and I got a dog that wants in. I'm going to have to edit this, aren't I? All right, we're back. Now, this one intrigued me. Atlas Craftsman 10, 12 inch lathe saddle crossfeed screw assembly used, needs to be cleaned. Let's read the description before we, um, oh, that's all it says. It does not, let's grasp my 10 inch lathe, saddle, cross feed, screw assembly. And then he's got some of his little stuff. Seller notes, needs to be cleaned. Um, $36.99. Now this has the screw, the gear, the little boss that screws into the machine itself and the dial and then that out on the end that would retain the handle is not there. Now $36.99 and $15.20 expedited shipping. Okay, 12 inches long. Now when you look at the original picture, if you kind of zoom in, and this is a common thing on parts like this, and this is one of the things where I say your nuts are always wore out and the screws are always wore. When you look at the picture, you, the, the first picture of it shows the complete assembly next to a tape measure. 
And when you look at it on the ends, and, and granted, part of the time will be distortion from the picture that's been taken or the angle that's been taken. But when you look at this, the outboard end, or would be the farthest away from you as you're facing the machine, end of this screw looks really, really good. As you kind of pan back through the lust of it, from about the two and a half inch mark on the ruler to about the five, five and a half, even all the way into the six inch marking on this ruler, it looks like it's a little bit smaller there. And it is indeed because it is smaller there. You know, it, it in towards the end in that four and a half to about six inch, it looks a little bit better, but it definitely looks like it's tapered down. And that's because it's wore there. And you can't really tell that. But the thing that kind of irks me about a lot of the things that I see on here is it's not being, the description says it's used. So you have to make your own decisions. And if you're really not watching for some of this stuff, you may not see it. That's the first picture. When you look at the second picture, it shows the very outer end where the hand wheel would mount and everything. It looks pretty grungy. Maybe that's just dirt that will clean off, dirt and grease. Um, maybe that's some corrosion down underneath, but it looks pretty ragged right there. It shows the gear, gear's probably fine. Um, dirty, does need to be cleaned, you know, and like I say, this may all clean up fine. When you look at the next picture, it shows more towards the upper end of it. And yeah, maybe it looks a little worn here, but you really can't tell. When you look at the other picture, it shows the farthest away end that's not worn at all, and it looks really good. So then the last picture just shows the, the outer end where the handle would, would adhere to. So even though it says it's used and they've left it for you to make your own decisions as to what you're going to do, why that's a well-worn part. So would I give uh, basically 50 bucks for that? No, I would not. So I got to go chase dogs out of the front yard. So those I think for the most part are my little rants for the day. Um, well, I guess maybe not. Um, new Atlas 9 12 inch lathe split, half split nut ball and spring set new. 795 and 530 shipping. This is from uh, one of the sellers that does a tremendous amount, does a lot of new parts, does some reproduction stuff. Um, what this amounts to, and I'll have to check and see what spring actually goes in here. This is a standard detent ball with a little short spring underneath it. The detent ball is at most 99 cents from your local big box store. The spring's probably, oh, that's probably a 79 cent spring, I'm guessing. I'll, I'll have to match these up and we'll figure out what these are. But those are another one you can source from your local big box store. You know, that's something that I will probably stock for four bucks, three bucks, something like that. Um, not proprietary. You know, there's replacements for these readily available out there. And there are about three more listings that I'm going to run through here and then I'm going to quit because I've got work to do today. Alice Craftsman 10 inch lathe compound slide tool rust. Excellent condition. Here we are with our excellent condition again. Um, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's old. It's old. It's a piece of shit. Old stuff. 150 bucks and ten dollars shipping um and this one this one's not uh, this would be usable um there's no handle on it no hand wheel handle the paint's chipped off um and it's probably well i'm almost sure it's been repainted it's a kind of a puke green color type of thing if you look you can see a little bit of markings on the end of the end of the compound assembly where it's been hit with a chuck, hit with material spinning in the chuck, whatever the case may be. Not terribly bad, but it's not in excellent condition. Um, Atlas Craftsman Lay 10 inch compound slide tool rest, excellent condition, and then it says less, but there's just three little dots after it, so who knows what that means. Um, so, you know, it's relatively complete. Is it worth 160 bucks? No, it's about 80 bucks worth of parts right there. About half, about half. Now this one's the one that um, 
There's two more of these here. This one used needs to be cleaned. This is a Atlas Craftsman 10 12 inch lathe upper tool post swivel number 10302 with pins and screws. Well, we've already been over the pins and screws. The pins, I think, on the website are five bucks if you don't want to make your own out of the 516s cold roll that you went and bought from your big box store. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And the screws are 99 cents a piece from your big box score. Three eighths. Coarse thread, uh, one inch long, square headed stuff, 99 cents a piece. So there we go. Now when you look at this, what's it say? What's it say? What's it say? Atlas Craftsman 10, 12 inch lathe, upper tool pull swivel with pins and screws. Um, so at least the, at least the description is not lying to you. Now this one's 49.99, 8.45 shipping. Now, is it worth 50 bucks? Yeah, it might actually be, but be sure of what you're buying. Now, when you look at these, you're looking at the bottom one, it is pretty grungy. There's chips on it and everything. Uh, the nut that would, uh, would accept the compound screw, it's, it's trash. You're gonna throw it away, so you've got a $40 replacement screw you're gonna have to add on top of that because this one's junk. You know what I mean? You can tell by looking at the amount of chips that are built up uh, and you can see a little bit on the inside of it, everything, it's, it's trashed, it's gone. The um, second picture will give you a lot of indication. Now you can, s there's a lot of scarring on the, on the ways where it's slid back and forth. But even more importantly than that is when you look at the centers of those, well, you can still see some of the original crosshatch pattern that would have been on it from the factory where they were where they were machine cut with a who knows what fly cut or dovetail cut or whatever the case. But when you look at both ends of that on both sides, why they're worn smooth. So that was loose enough that that rocked back and forth at the end of its travel. Part of that will be the gib fit up. Part of that's going to be the sloppiness and the lead screw that's going to have affected that. But that's not only does it need to be cleaned, it's going to have to have a new lead screw. It's going to have to be scraped if you're going to gain anything out of it. Um, the swivel on top is in probably okay condition. You can see some swivel mark wear there, but nothing that I'd be concerned about really, in all honesty. Um, that would probably be fine. But that uh, it's been well used and abused. It's been worn. Is it worth 49 bucks? Up to you to decide. And the last one, another 10, 12 inch feed gearbox forward reverse, complete excellent condition. Another excellent condition one. Anything in the description that tells us anything new? Nope, just excellent condition. For your $300, no way in hell. No way, no way. Feed gearbox complete, okay. First picture, other than a little bit of chip paint, plating uh, flaking off of the engagement handle knob, the screws burred up. Um, so that tells us it's not in excellent condition right off the bat. Next picture shows the inside. You look at some of these miter gears and you look at the wear pattern on them. You have to look close to be to be seeing this stuff, but there's some. You can see the wear patterns on them. They're used and abused. Used and abused. The third picture I'm looking at, if you look in the upper left-hand corner of the gears on the bevel gears, why you can see little divots out of it and little, I mean, I've seen worse, but this has got definite wear patterns. It's definitely been abused. Um, and maybe not abused, but after 50 years of use, these things are gonna show they're going to show wear, you know, they're going to wear out the, the um, next one shows just one of the bottom bevel gears. You look at part of those teeth, they've been, they've been worn over. Um, you look at the, you look at the engagement patterns on them and they're, they're well used. You know, if you're not for 300 bucks, that's a ripoff. People are smoking dope. I don't, uh, I don't get it. You know, so that's kind of my spiel for the day. You know, there was something here. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. And this is one, if I can find it, 
that I thought was actually the best deal I have seen on eBay in a long time. And there, I guess I did look at several other miter gears and stuff along the way. But when you go down a ways, there is a Atlas 7120, 7122 wood lathe here. And it's in Bremerton, Washington, which is not terribly far from me. Well, not terribly far. It's 150 miles, 175 miles. But if I did not have a wood lathe, I would probably go and buy this one. It's $425 on a buy it now. Shows it is used. It's a brand new seller. The pictures show it and everything. This is a cool little wood lathe, 36 inches between center. It's got a Dunlap one-third horsepower motor sold from Sears. Got a fair amount of accessories with it. There's there's a V-rest there. There's a face plate. There's another bolt-on face plate. Um, there's a wrench. So I see one, two more steady rests, and I see an adjustable rest for on the thing. It's mounted on a looks like just a piece of one by it it had to be mounted and I think they say that in the in the list this thing in the listing this is in, it's got a link belt on it which we know how I feel about link belts I see a spur center there a little bit of corrosion on there but all in all this is a good looking little wood lathe for your four hundred and twenty five dollars um, yeah I think it's a I think it's a good deal you know, the listing says wood lathe, 7122, Atlas 7122. Atlas lathe with some tools, a one by 10 to one and an eighth by eight adapters included, all in working condition, what will need to be mounted to a sturdy table or dedicated bench. Original manual is still with the lathe. That's a smoking deal. You know, you can probably find other stuff a little bit cheaper, but if you're an Atlas, Atlas person, um, it's a good clean little lathe. It's, you know, there's some, there's some dark spots on it. All in all, the paint looks pretty good from the pictures. Um, in person, it's probably not going to look quite as well. But it's a wood lathe. You know, the the precision is not like you're trying to get out of your out of your uh, metal lathe. And this is a this is a nice looking little little lathe, and it looks like a honest seller selling it. You know. So anyway. Hopefully you find that a little bit informative, a little bit entertaining. Once again, not sponsored by Fleabay. And uh, if you haven't hit that subscribe button and you like these little fun endeavors, hit that subscribe button. If you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. Comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. The people that have been giving me thumbs down on these little videos are, I'm assuming, probably eBay sellers. and. As always, keep it up. Thanks for taking the time to watch.